Hi, everybody. Well, FEMA is doing their risk assessment again, and these flood-prone areas that they demarcate, many of them were in the non-flood zones. So I bring this to your attention. This article is regarding one area of New York, Greece, New York. A Greece family, local officials are warning homeowners who live near the water. They could soon be hit with big changes in how federal emergency managers deal with flood risk. Oh, we wish it would go away. Don't we all? All right. Um, this family had to break into their retirement fund. They're lifting their house five feet. Uh, if you don't mitigate or don't get flood insurance, if there is a flood in your area, you are out of luck for FEMA assistance. Now, um, this is just Greece, New York, but this is happening all over all over the country. And if you live near a body of water, you want to check out whether or not your zoning has changed. So FEMA will be putting out this, uh, their new map in the fall. So I would suggest that you bookmark FEMA's site and check it out or call your, um, your homeowner's insurance company. So in Greece, New York, it will be approximately 1200 a year on top of your insurance policy as it is. More and more and more money. Yes, the wife of the uh, family, the wife of the couple, Mueller, Kathy Mueller said that um, they lived in this area in Greece, New York, for 46 years, never, ever, never have they had to do anything. So now it's demarcated as a flood zone, and now they have to get insurance. So don't know if you saw this, but wow. Okay, very pertinent to what we have been talking about. Some for decades, myself for, well, this topic in particular, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, for 10 years at least. Um, and wow, all of us talking, screaming, trying to educate, and getting responses from people. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Oh, you know, the role of the eyes, the hostility, yada, yada, yada. Well, Everything now is coming true. Isn't that interesting? Listen to this. The main way ERCOT is asking everyone to conserve power is by turning up the temperature on their thermostats. But what if someone else is doing it for you without your knowledge? Matt Doherty is hearing from folks in Deer Park who say it's happening to them. When Brandon English got home from work yesterday, the house was hot. She had cranked it down at about 2.30. It takes a long time for this house to get cool once it gets that hot. Earlier in the day, Brandon's wife and their daughters decided to take their afternoon nap. They had been asleep long enough that the house had already got 78 degrees. So they wake up sweating. Without anyone touching it, their thermostat was changed while they were sleeping, making their home unbearably hot. Was my daughter at the point of overheating? You know, she's three months old. They dehydrate very quickly. You know, we're very careful when we go out places let alone her covered up in the bed, just getting hot. Soon after that, his wife got an alert on her phone. The thermostat had been changed remotely, raising the temperature during a three-hour energy-saving event. The family smart thermostat was installed a few years ago as part of a new home security package. Many smart thermostats can be enrolled in a program called Smart Savers Texas. It's operated by a company called Energy Hub. The agreement states that in exchange for entry into a sweepstakes, electric customers allow for the company to access their thermostats during periods of high energy demand. Their list of its clients include TXU Energy, Centerpoint, and ERCOT. 
Brandon says he unenrolled their thermostat as soon as he found out. Because uh, you never would have done it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want anybody else controlling my things right. for me. A scroll through a Houston Reddit board shows Brandon's not alone. Several others say they found out during this week's heat wave that their thermostats were being accessed remotely as well. Brandon says although it's been convenient, it's just not worth it. Well, if somebody else can, can manipulate this, I'm not, I'm not for it. In Deer Park, I'm Matt Doherty, KHOU. You're not for it. He unenrolled. But, Mr. English, it's coming. You know, that full control over every aspect of our life. How many times have we said those words? Well, they're showing you smart technology is really dumb. Now, can they do this with smart meters? Yes. Smart electric meters? Yes. Smart water meters? Yes. Can they access smart devices of any kind? Yes. It's coming. It's coming. Now, I will link below to uh, another article here, which essentially says the same thing, but I was unable to this link is not working for me, but it might work for you. Uh, others in Texas are on social media saying, what the hell is going on? I put my thermostat at a certain uh, temperature and I come home and it's raised. Okay. There are so many opt-out programs. Clearly, this is an opt-out because Mr. English didn't know about it and didn't know that he was enrolled. Now, I just clicked off that video, which I want to bring up again because, did you see how many companies are in that, what is it called, the Energy Hub? Um, I think that's what it's called. Yes, Energy Hub. It's a company. And who signed on? Duke Energy, National Grid. So this is not just going to happen in Texas. It's going to happen in other states. So if you are getting your electricity from any of these uh, companies, BGE, DTE, uh, Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, Encore, SRP, Avant Grid, National Grid, APS, CPS, uh, Edison, that, I think that's Southern California Edison, PSEG, Duke Energy, Centerpoint, ERCOT, Eversource. And I'm not sure if that's the, the, the entirety. Go to Energy Hub. Look to see if you're getting your energy from any of these companies. And then go opt out of that program. It might be a different name in your state, in your area, but you don't want that happening to you. Eventually, yeah, none of us will have any control over anything. Other people will have control over every aspect of our sweet little life. So, Rosa Corey. Now, I'm going to play a few minutes of this video. I will link below. If you do not know anything about Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, then you've got some learning to do to find out what's going on. And thank you, Rosa, for leaving this incredible website behind that has so much information that people can access to educate themselves. Rosa passed away just recently. Okay, listen up. As John said, my role today is to set the stage for the Greater Reset by looking at the World Economic Forum's Great Reset, the fourth uh, industrial revolution, 
the UN Agenda 2030, and of course the larger plan within which all of this revolves, which is United Nations Agenda 21, Sustainable Development. We're, we can agree that we're witnessing the great purge. It's the great concentration of wealth and power, the great reveal of willing dictators, the great reallocation of resources, the great digital revolution of the surveillance state. This is the agenda for the 21st century and beyond. It's the great rehash of the old plan. So I'm going to start there. Um, UN Agenda 21, Sustainable Development, is the comprehensive blueprint. It's the action plan, as the UN calls it, to inventory and control all land, water, minerals, plants, animals, construction, means of production, energy, education, transportation, information, and all human beings in the world. It's an inventory and control plan. This is the agenda for the 21st century. It's a blueprint for 100 years. And there are milestones at 2020, 2030, 2035, and 2050. Agenda 2030 is just a milestone within the main 100-year plan. So Agenda 21 Sustainable Development is the global plan for inventory and control. It encompasses every aspect of your life, and it's intended to be a wrenching transformation of your life. That's what Senator Al Gore called it when he, um, when he took the United States uh, sort of group to the largest gathering of heads of state and national representatives that had ever been convened up to that time. That was in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 1992 for the Agenda 21 conference. Representatives of 178 nations plus the Vatican agreed to this action plan. So yeah, I know you're going to see on Wikipedia that it says it's a non-binding voluntary agreement, uh, except Agenda 21 is binding on you. It's been written into the laws of your countries, um, all the way from China, all Western and Middle Eastern nations, all over the world, through a collaboration of governments, corporations, and organizations, and foundations. It's a global plan. It's not an international plan. International means between nations. But this plan erases nations. It's global. It's a global plan that's implemented locally. So it has a different name everywhere, but it's the same plan. Every aspect of your life is affected. So it's in your school curricula. It's in your planning and building department. It's in your court system, in your healthcare system. It's everywhere, but they never call it Agenda 21. You're going to see it as regional plans often that are called Plan Bay Area or Four States, One Vision, or Mexico 2030, or Hanoi 2030, or Horizon 2050 in Canada, for example. They're all the same plan. They elevate major economic power centers to a supra-governmental status, that is outside of and above the traditional representative government model. These are the mega regions. They drive the economy and they overpower the nation state. They combine parts of cities, of states, they even combine pieces of nations together. They destroy boundaries and they ignore legal jurisdictions by creating new economic princedoms. These are new fiefdoms. It's not government. It's governance. Governance. It's a system made up of public sector agencies, nonprofits, business organizations, advocacy groups, foundations, and corporations. What do they have in common? You don't vote for any of that. The larger the entity, the further away it is from you, the less power you have. You get literally taken out of the picture. This is the new global state in which you are a global citizen. Okay, so the new state is the means by which you have to serve others for the common good, and that's defined by the state. It's supposedly from the bottom up. It's something you want. But really, it's an end run against your around 
your sovereignty. It's your sovereignty is eroded piece by piece. So, you know, the question is, what is the Agenda 21 plan? When you see it in public, in the public, it's primarily a land use plan. It's the rallying cry, you know, for sustainable development. What do they say? That we're killing the planet with our CO2 emissions. So the plan is designed to corral populations into what the UN calls islands of human habitation, human settlements. Of course, once you're in that concentrated island of human habitation, formerly called a city, you're more easily managed, controlled, and surveilled. It might be a city like the one that Sidewalk Labs, a subsidiary of Google's parent company, Alphabet, a city like they had planned for the area, an area of Toronto. That city was to have had sensors embedded everywhere, literally, and the residents would have their services restricted unless they exposed every aspect of their lives digitally. If, for example, as a resident, you refused to have your data linked to your identity, you would have less rights than others. This is a smart city. It's a city where I believe virtual and augmented reality will replace real life and actually be more, more appealing. Ultimately, people may spend their entire lives living virtually, and those lives are going to be short. So what's the justification for this dystopia? The story is that your greenhouse gas emissions will be reduced by consolidating populations into these dense city centers where energy and water usage can be limited. This is going to get you out of the rural areas where you can basically do what you want, raise your livestock, um, grow food with water from your well, drive your farm truck and own a firearm. But uh, in order to implement Agenda 21, your country, state, county, parish, canton, city, whatever, is imposing this land use plan locally. Because think about this, where you live has a lot to do with how you live and what your life will be. So your old life has to be transformed. Transform, that's code for destroyed and rebuilt. That's the new normal. This includes both what they call the built environment and the way that you use that physical space. Your beliefs and your expectations have to be transformed and rebuilt as well. Your energy use, water use, food consumption, social structure, work, health, and your life expectancy views, all of that has to be transformed. And much of that is determined in that regional plan that you've got right there where you live. I suggest you check it out. So how do they destroy your rights? You don't vote for it. You do pay for it, though. Uh, that regional plan gets paid for with federal and state grants that pay for consultants who basically contract to push this through the community. And the few concerned citizens who show up to the visioning meetings and the charrettes, as they call them, to object, the consultants are there to block opposition. They're basically there to indoctrinate the public. The consultants are trained change agents and organizational managers. They're there to give the impression that they've listened to the public and the public approves the plan. It's all an act. I think you're going to agree that this is a real big deal. It's a tough sell and a huge management problem, even with the deception and the, colli and the collusion of the corporate media. I should say the partnership, the ownership. It's not easy to destroy nearly 500 years of the nation state. So it has to be done incrementally, using all of the power and influence of government, corporations, and organizations, including all tech, entertainment, media, and education. This is a media mega corporate plan, a totally mega corporate plan. It's a joint partnership. It's a public-private partnership between government, the world's largest corporations, banking conglomerates, the big money foundations like the Ford and Rockefeller Foundations, groups like the World Wildlife Fund and the National Religious Partnership for the Environment. It's a closed circle. It only includes you when you agree with their plan. Of course, that's what's meant by getting the approval of the community. The community is anyone who agrees with the plan. 
If you don't agree, you're not the community. Dissent is not permitted. These major foundations, they give grants to thousands of startup organizations. They train and they fund spin-off groups like, that look like benevolent nonprofits and neighborhood associations. This whole system, it acts as the lower bureaucracy for the new system. And, you know, this is, this is basically an ultimate enemy, the ultimate enemy of the individual. So to make Agenda 21 happen, it requires the full integration of systems in order to control them centrally. Thus, the standardization of all systems and the new currency is information and energy. In order to have centralized control, full globalization, it's necessary to standardize all law, all education, all culture, all finance. In order to merge, it has to be standardized. So, yeah, this was impossible until the advent of the computer age. Now it's inevitable. This is why every school child is given a computer and the internet is now in tiny villages in every nation. Your educational system is used to manipulate you into thinking of yourself as a global citizen. Yeah, I hope you don't, because a global citizen is not a citizen at all and has no rights. Under UN Agenda 21 Sustainable Development, what's termed a right is really a privilege and it can be taken away or granted at any time. Of course, conversely, punishment can be imposed without redress. So this explains how the UN can call universal internet connectivity a human right. During COVID, UNICEF, the UN Children's Educational Fund, they created a project called GIGA. And the goal is to get every school in the world to do online classes. And the term for this is direct instruction. Nothing comes between the child and the computer. It makes standardized indoctrination really easy. And of course, you all know that as a startup, Google was funded by the intelligence community in order to spy on people who searched specific topics on the internet. So uh, then they could identify those people. Basically, it turns the tables on us and exposes us to surveillance. Now billions of people voluntarily carry a surveillance device at all times. When you hear the term smart, whether it's a smartphone or a smart car or smart, smart home or whatever, this is an acronym, S-M-A-R-T, sustainability, monitoring, assessing, rating, and tracking you. GIGA, the Children's Universal Connectivity Project, has digitalized more during 10 weeks of COVID than in the last 10 years. For this, they need 5G. And for that, they need decentralized energy projection. That enables digitalized experimentation and spying on large populations without their consent or knowledge. Sort of a digital colonization. Mega corporations are out there. They're searching for people who add value who are innovators. Corporations want to own innovation. Not everybody has value in this system, this new system. Most of you don't. Most likely you're worth less than your student loan. Your value, your social credit score, is based on whether you produce more than you consume and whether you serve or obstruct the state. Government has overcome our constitutional rights by merging with private corporations who can operate without restraint in secret, punishing, purging, and disappearing dissidents like Facebook and Google and Twitter and Amazon have done virtually. This is globalization. Globalization erases the boundaries going from the city all the way up to the nation. It's the end of representative government. Now, you know, I know you might think that government is an obstacle, it's a danger, and it doesn't represent you anyway, so who cares, right? Well, I do know who I'm speaking to here, and actually I agree. But at least in the United States, government was originally conceived as representative. It was like you were a busy farmer or a merchant, and you elected a representative who agreed to give up a few years of their life to handling that stuff so you didn't have to. 
These positions were never intended to be lifelong gigs. Now people like Pelosi and McConnell are in government for 50 years. Well, why is that? It's because they keep getting voted in. The money that elects them keeps them there. At the top, power has no party. So what do the globalist controllers want? Agenda 21 is designed for management efficiency. Mega corporations want to have harmonized, integrated laws and regulations and as few as possible. So they don't have to change their business or retool to sell in different markets. They want no borders and open markets. They want to kill competition, no matter how small, and engineer demand. They want to deal with as few decision makers as possible, ideally just one. They want to merge with government. They want workers suited for the work needed and easily discarded. They want to own innovation, so they want direct connection with universities. They want to control all resources, human and natural, because you know, humans are a resource, or more likely, you're a hindrance. Mega corporations need full control and total information. This is the digital revolution. It's the fourth industrial revolution. It is the great reset. The previous three industrial revolutions mainly focused on energy and hardware. Whether it was steam or gas or electronics, these new energies radically restructured society for the family, all the way from the family basically to work, to cities, to government, everything completely restructured. This is the fourth industrial revolution now, the digital revolution. It's the explosion of technology moving faster than the speed of ethics and oversight, and it eclipses all previous three revolutions. From, <laughs> it's from uh, artificial intelligence having the potential to change the nature of the human being to robotics being used for policing, to smart buildings and sensors that monitor us continuously. This revolution enables an uncertain future. The fourth industrial revolution in the context of the first three represents a phenomenal acceleration in terms of time and the ability to control the masses, transform and disrupt, build back better. When you hear that, no that you can't rebuild it unless you break it first. They call it the new social contract, the one you didn't agree to, the great reset com concept that you, you won't own anything, you'll rent anything you need. You've got to look at that through the lens of private property. You are your most important private property. To lose ownership of your freedom of speech, of movement, basically of your free will, that means you lose what is most important to you. It reduces your expectations for a full life and forces you into a new era of austerity, of scarcity. That ain't easy. It's not easy to do this. The loss of freedom in the most vital of ways, the independence and privacy of the body and mind, that demands what they call the new normal. You don't come to that place without a major crisis. The self-styled globalist controllers who intend to just to, you know, totally disrupt the future, they considered what kind of a crisis would be necessary to make one world governance a reality, one that expands beyond the corporations into our homes and our bodies. The way I look at it, global crisis requires a global response, and that justifies global governance. It really takes a major crisis, a global crisis, to break the identification with your nation and your culture. Something like climate change, right? It, it creates an existential terror that we're destroying the planet and our entire way of life is a threat to its continued existence. Hey, that ain't science. Science is made to fit the desired result in this situation. It is the green mask. So behind that mask of environmental concern, you find the lust for global, centralized, totalitarian control. The climate change threat is a stage, it's a phase. It's designed to prepare us for more restrictions and limitations. 
And now we're experiencing, of course, a much more pervasive and restrictive threat. They brought out the big gun. The new existential threat is COVID-19. In fact, the World Wildlife Fund says that COVID is, quote, nature's response to man's abuse of the environment, <laughs> unquote. Are they serious? Yeah, nature is a terrorist. So invisible, colorless, odorless, scarcely detectable, COVID is the new mask for the new normal. 9-11 was the justification for the security state. COVID enables the surveillance state. COVID justifies global enforcement. Truly tailor-made for the new world order. COVID has issued in house arrest, purges of truth tellers, economic collapse, the full empowerment of these mega corporations. And of course, how could I forget the willing, the lineup of the willing, the willing dictators from Macron in France to Ardern in New Zealand, to Trudeau in Canada, to Harris in the US, to Cuomo, Newsom, Whitmer, Garcetti, Lightfoot, and dozens of others all across the world. In the competition for the rule of the mega regions, the willing co collaborators are stepping up, locally as well, of course. And this is really what the last four years have been about. Separate the wheat from the chaff, the loyal from the dissidents. That's how it's done. Mao Zedong did this in China with his Let a Hundred Flowers Bloom campaign. He encouraged his loyal followers to critique his programs so that he could make them better. But really, he did it to identify and purge his critics which he did. So what I'm talking about here is power. Those with power want to keep it. Those without it want it. There have always been people who wanted to control the world. What's changed is the capacity for control has expanded in velocity and scope in a way that has never before been possible. So now, as I conclude, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to be brave to find the joy in simply being alive. Ask yourself, what do I value? Recognize, you know, you yourself are part of the reason that we're in this situation. Have you preferred convenience to liberty? The free world requires liberty with responsibility, and that takes work. The work we do can be full of pitfalls, full of controlled opposition, which appears to be the answer but instead as a sort of a greenwashed, candy-coated, twisted circle of propaganda that goes back to the green mask. So you've got to stop and think. Never go along to get along. Know that there will be no Switzerland in this new world. No place to hide. So the time to resist is now. Refuse to collaborate. Don't carry a smartphone. Don't volunteer to give your biometrics or DNA. Don't cooperate. Opt out while you can. And please, prepare to work to stay free. It takes all of us working to make this happen. Above all, my friends, remember who you are. Laugh, dance, and love. And join us in creating the greater reset. Thank you so much. Well, that, I was not going to play the whole thing, but I was uh, very interested, and we lost a powerhouse. So, everything she said can be verified by you, if you don't believe it. Go to United Nations, put in the search bar, United Nations Agenda 21. Agenda 2030. It is happening at an accelerated pace. I see it now all over the control, the control and the controllers that are already controlling an awful lot of us. You know, listening to Rosa, I was reminded of all of my research, Texas is a powerhouse mega region. That's why we see 
an awful lot of Agenda 2030 and Agenda 21 coming out of Texas. Now, of course, California is as well. But with Texas, I'll never forget, and I believe it was after Harvey, they had a press conference, and I kept hearing the word governance, governance. And I thought, what, what is, what, governance? I think it was Harvey. It was one of your floods. Governance. It's already. That's the, uh, that's the structure in Texas. You don't have a government. Government. You have governance. That's why these uh, judges, though they're not actual judges, but in Texas, you know, the town council or city council members, they call them judges. I don't know why, but okay. Um, and there's that one in Houston, and I can't remember her name, but I can see her face in my mind, and I don't want to. Um, that's why they uh, are seemingly confident when they're speaking about their orders. You now, you wear that mask, and but understand this. You know, we just saw it, right? The Texas Power Company is remotely changing your temperature in your home. I mean, okay, everybody should be outraged. But this control that they're showing you, okay, this is to get you used to the loss of control. The power outages, um, they will have code enforcers, which, you know, we see them in California. Um, oh, man, my memory is li leaving me. I can't remember his name. Out in California, another um, Agenda 21-2030. Gary. Oh, boy. All right. I'm sorry. But... The code enforcers that now will knock on your door, but eventually they will come and they will get access inside your home. Eventually, you will see they don't schedule appointments. They just show up. They inspect the inside. They inspect the outside. And if you have any code violation... You're fined quite a bit. You know, we've seen um, news about somebody's grass being a little bit too high. Well, communities around the country have imposed very strict um, restrictions, requirements. And there was a, a news segment where code enforcers in Florida, can't remember exactly where, were going around with rulers. They were measuring the height of grass. You don't mow, you get fined. Okay. Well, again, the Texas Triangle, that mega region, is um, moving along. But like California... Now we have Texas. These are two states that look into what's happening there, and it's absolutely coming everywhere, and look into the regional plan that is going on in your area. That's why I said that Trump never stopped anything. Nothing was stopped did not matter that he did not sign that Paris Agreement because governors and mayors are part of the Paris Agreement. They've signed on. Okay, now, the president has the authority to uh, negotiate and sign treaties. So Trump doesn't sign, and yet mayors and governors do, Governance. 
we don't have the structure of government government that an awful lot of Americans believe we have. This is really important, okay? This is really important. You want to lose all control over your own life. You want to be destroyed. Keep sitting back. But, you know, truth is, the acceleration, you know, the uh, incremental increase in the the fourth industrial revolution that's been going on for decades and decades so they needed us to sit back and do nothing and it appears they got their way so that's not that's not too fun. <laughs> anyway, Rosa, you are missed. The links are below.